and welcome to a brand new episode of Happy Mom, Happy Baby, the podcast. Today's guest is an actress. You've have seen her on Hollyoaks for many a year. Uh, you will also have seen her on I'm a Celeb, on Dancing on Ice, on Celebs Go Dating. Uh, so you'll have seen her a lot. Uh, she's always a joy to have on screen. Um, in the summer of 2021, she found she was pregnant with quads. Uh, sadly, at 14 weeks, she was told that she'd had a missed miscarriage. Uh, but last year, she welcomed Forrest, her little boy. And here she is. It's Geordie Porter. Hi. And also, can I just say, I am a yes. big fan. Obviously, I was listening <laughs> to the podcast throughout the whole pregnancy in the car when you can still reach the you know the steering wheel I was yeah. listening to your podcast like just absorbing everyone else's you know stories and their lives so I am just grateful really you. did you did you find it did you find it useful like having like other people's experiences like in your yeah ears? absolutely and you know what one stuck out in my mind I think it was Gino DeCampo and he oh, was gosh. like <laughs> he he was like if I don't want to do it, I won't do it. I won't watch Disney films, no. And I thought, you know what? If I don't want to do that, I won't do it in my future life. And so you do take things from people and you think, yeah, yeah. I will take on these things because they do it. And it's not Those such a bad nuggets. thing. Those little nuggets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, really. how, are you, how are you feeling? Because how old is Forrest now? So he's seven months now, almost eight months. Yeah. Um, and do you know what's crazy? I feel like I've just now learn how to relax and be a bit calm because it, how much of well I, I'd say from when you have you pee on the stick and you get pregnant that is the happiest day ever isn't it like yeah. that's like oh my god we're so happy from that day forward is just pure anxiety stress and oh my god yeah. like yeah so I feel like I've been a bit tense a bit stressed until sort of now this stage where he laughs in your face and he's a bit more like decides what he wants and not you're a bit like oh right I can take it a bit more easy now you're getting a lot more back as well yeah yeah which when people say you know there's a newborn and you get nothing so you don't feel like you're a bit like "Mm, yeah I'm just this little baby's nothing but then when he starts to be a bit like like he's a proper little lad (laughs) and he's like oh he's getting a little personality you think yeah something's happening here we'd like yeah, we're seeing things. You've given me flashbacks to my first day with Buzz, like, so still in hospital with a newborn. I mean, just turning to the nurse and the midwife and being like, so, you know, when does he start, like, doing things? <laughs> like, yeah. Being awake? Yeah. Know, or looking he, at me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, when he moves, is this, like, is he happy? Is he what? You think yeah. everything, but you just, there's nothing, is it? It's like, nothing. Yeah. No. How mobile is Forrest right now? Oh, he's in a walker. He legs it around. Our kitchen cupboard sides are just being bashed apart. The dogs are being chased. They have to, like, skip over him, bless them, because <laughs> we've, we've got big Doberman with big long legs and a little tiny dog um, lady as well, so they're, like, dodging around him. But he's he's not crawling, Yeah. but he's, he's running. Yeah. So he's literally running before he can crawl, yeah. Oh, bless him. And also, I do think there's that thing about walkers. You know that they are, they're safe, they're in that contained space. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know exactly, but they're not getting out. You know exactly where they are. Whereas once they start walking, yeah. maybe you oh, won't feel yeah. quite so calm, Georgie. No, yeah, because you, you can just hear him bashing about, can't you? So you think, oh, he's okay there. Right, yeah, he's around that area. So you know he's, <laughs> he's good. But he, he had a little break from his walker because we went away on holiday and we didn't have a walker there. And then yeah. he came back and he was so excited. He legged it so fast and banged his face on the bar and was Aww. like, nah. So, it, yeah, you're a bit like, oh, you've like forgotten and now you remember and now you're a bit more calmer. So that was that was a moment, yeah. I love it. Um, Georgie, <laughs> where did you grow up? Um, So I grew up in Salford, Eccles, Mountain, so a bit of like a bit of the ends, a bit like you know, a bit of like a deep Salford core area, and right. uh, yeah, in a in a house on Liverpool Road is exactly. And if anybody knows about it, they're like, ooh, <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was a bit, it was a bit like you know, a bit of a rough end, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I kind of got that when you were saying properly deep in in yeah. yeah yeah one of my best <laughs> mates is from Salford and oh he, yeah he told me many a story yeah yeah and and I think it's funny because like as a kid 
I used to just like go out on the streets and like be on my bike, just, you know, like rolling around. And like my poor grandma once, she lost me and I lied to her and I said I was in the car park and I wasn't. I was like five streets down just on my bike. And she'd like phoned my mum at work and was like, I'm really worried she's gone missing. And I was totally missing. I did go missing and I came back and she was like, where have you been? And I was like, just on the car park, grandma. It's like, just next door. But bless her, like, I'm, like I think now I think, my baby's not going anywhere. Like, he is not yeah. leaving the front garden, yeah. But it's a different time now as well. Like, I can remember my first trip going to the, like, being sent to the shops to get something like cupcake cases or something, something mm. ridiculous like that. And I would have been about eight you know yeah. going off without yeah. whereas now I've got a nine seven and four year old there is no way I would trust no. them you know not even trust them trust other people like there's so yeah. much trust within the world that you have to yeah. you know put into put into play yeah even like crossing a road like the cars now like nobody nobody cares it's like you know yeah. there's deer running around our place around there and you think anyone could just crash into a deer and just nobody thinks that far ahead that a kid could be crossing the road do they yeah. like yeah. Did you have siblings growing up? No, I was an only child. I'd say I was a lonely child, but I I was that kid that would just like latch onto your family. Like mm. I'd I'd be in your house in your fridge, and you'd be like, "Oh, Georgie's round." <laughs> I'd, be, <laughs> I'd be just there because my mum dropped me off, and you know, I'd be like with all the other siblings, like their brothers and sisters, and then they'd kick off, and I'd be like, "I get to go home, so I'm not getting involved in this." <laughs> And I remember I used to, you know, we had house phones. I used to grab the house phone for them and be like, right, I'm ready to come home now. No. <laughs> yeah. or, or, or one of those, can I stay over? Like, I want to sleep over for two days. And mum would be like, are you sure? Have you asked Nicola? Have you asked the mum? <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a free childhood in that sense then. Yeah I, can't, yeah, I feel like I did what I wanted. Like, just kind of was here, there and everywhere doing. Yeah. And was your nan a massive part of your life? Oh, your life? yeah. So she, my mum has this joke that like my, my grandma said, you're going to need help with your baby because like my mum was a single parent. Um, so I'll, I'll move in for two weeks and I'll just help you with the baby. And then it ended up being, I think, I think she was, I think she died seven, nine years ago now. So it was all my life. She basically lived with me and <laughs> it was, it was the best. Like if you, you know, if mum says no, you ask grandma, that kind of thing. Yeah. And she was, she was deaf, but she was so eccentric and so posh and so well spoken and completely different. Was she'd be like, George, don't take all the milk from the fridge, and I'd be like, I'm just getting cereal, and you'd have to shout it really loud because she'd be like, what? And to live next door to us, you must have thought, what goes on in that house? <laughs> they're just <laughs> looking for milk. That's what they're doing. I just want milk from the cereal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did your child, did like at that point, did you ever look ahead to your own, um, you know, the idea of you becoming a mum in the future? Or was that something that wasn't even on your radar? Um, I think I, as a kid, I'd look towards and think, oh, I'll have a family. Um, but I, I just, I don't think I ever thought that far ahead, really. I, I didn't really think to have kids. It was only in COVID I thought. I need children because I will die alone. <laughs> <laughs> is that all? Do you, do you think maybe your profession is also a part of that? Like, I, if I think back to, like, well, so I'm an actress, and and so much mm. of that is you, you, ha you don't want to take yourself out of it at all. Like, so much, yeah. you're, you're scared to plan holidays just in case an audition comes in or work comes in, and like, so life is almost put on hold in 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 that way. Yeah, I think definitely as well in the beginning when you sort of not you know you don't have a, a job that you yeah. sort of have to be ready don't you to yeah. go anywhere or do anything like I remember like having to go and um work in sort of like a holiday resort or something and like you know be a where you advertise something and yeah. you know stand in a shopping mall and like give out leaflets and stuff and you're like I'll be there because I need the money and I'll be better and faster getting there than anyone else so you did have to sort of you know for the money didn't you really yeah, you had yeah, to yeah. make ends meet yeah um and you met Ollie yeah we, we well, how did you meet <laughs> my story is different to his he Isn't will tell it? you a completely different <laughs> yeah take on well I think men's visions are different to women's anyway and mine certainly was um it was in a nightclub in Manchester sort of in my days of partying like going out young 20s um 
I'd say about maybe eight or nine years ago now, this was our first meet. Um, and I remember this vividly. I had porn stars at the bar and I turned around with them and he was at the bar and he was like, you're fit. Can I have your number? <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> ew, no. Because <laughs> then I was like, oh, obviously, you know, we have Hollyoaks, so you're just, yeah, that's all you want. And I remember walking up. I remember he wearing like a green shirt, open chest, a chain on his like neck and me just being like oh my god you're too slick like no and then I think I remember him sort of asking again I like pestering is what I would say yeah he wouldn't he wouldn't say pestering um and I was like okay we'll go on a date and we did a few dates we went on a few dates and he then heard that his ex-partner was pregnant with his right. baby um and this was before we were dating so I was a bit like oh mm. this is a lot this is a too lot, much yeah. for me I'm in the partying zone of my life and I want to go party he was like you party too much you have people around you that are not really your friends and stuff so he was seeing sort of like things like that and I was like whatever see ya so we sort of separated and also in a, in a kind of way so we, we never did anything like we didn't yeah. you know so innocent. yeah we didn't get there to, I don't know what happened but it was always a bit like oh well we didn't do anything anyway so it was okay yeah um and then throughout seven eight years we kind of like messaged each other bumped into each other I remember he's in the room somewhere always taking the baby in the <laughs> holder I actually wanted to show you o- Ollie come here get quick sorry uh, that's <laughs> okay Ollie come here <laughs> hi oh you my gosh frog. there you go that's such a cute <laughs> outfit <laughs> <laughs> in his frog. Rainbow, little frog. There they go, and their family out. And um, <laughs> you can say what you want about them, about them now. They're now going gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So seven, eight years in between, we were messaging. So, and I'd always be like, "What do you want? Like, what's your intention? Like, why, why are you messaging me? And then we won't meet up. So, you and like annoying. you said, it is such a massive thing. I think when you're when you're in a show like that especially in Hollyoaks and you're going out around that area you know yeah you, you have to you have to be cautious about why people are approaching you what their what their <laughs> intentions are and actually he had noted that about the people that were surrounding you you know yeah. questioning their intentions yeah 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 and I know actually I, I did date a few people that were all about that and that was like you know you find out afterwards and you're like it's embarrassing and cringy and you just think oh yeah. I think these eight years we both sort of went off and did our careers and like he yeah. did really well in his career he worked his way up in his property life and I went to move to Hollywood and did everything that you could imagine and failed miserably but it was quite funny adventure um, yeah and this is crazy adventure and I think and then we you know got with other people as well so we got that out of our systems and I remember bumping into him as well in a hotel that we both loved, the Bloomsbury in London. And I looked at him and I was like, oh my God, he is hot. Like he is got real like hotter than before. So I was a bit like, oh, but he was with someone. So I thought, right, okay, nope, that's good. Goodbye. Um, and then towards the end of COVID, when we were allowed in pubs, like with other people sort of thing, when you're allowed to have other friends, um, he said, do you want to go for a coffee and even then I was like what are your intentions like why are you talking to me now like what do you want because I'm a businessman I'm very busy but I'll go for a coffee with you and I was like oh and I remember I love how much oh, is going oh. on <laughs> yeah, I just, I, and I remember that feeling of being like you annoy me and I think why do you annoy me because I don't even know you anymore so we went to this pub and I think I had like one glass of wine and I remember him picking me up and I was like oh my god god he's hot and I and this is funny and I talk about this all the time and I wore these stupid plastic wedgie shoes that I bought in COVID and the in a moment of madness because you do don't you you just buy those you weren't going anywhere (laughs) I wasn't going anywhere I thought these were cool and then my one day out in these shoes he was like what are those they are disgusting and I thought oh oh annoying (laughs) and then (laughs) We sat there and he was like, So, what's your life? And I was like, Dating guys. And he went, Well, you can't date guys anymore. Like, I want, and honestly, God, it was weird. Something just hit us and was like, You're the one. And I was like, Oh my God, I fancy you massively. And I really want to have your babies and get married to you. Inside, obviously, I didn't say that out loud. But 
in had you had that it? you know you said earlier about covid had changed your perception of babies and when had yeah. that had that been the catalyst or had it been sort of starting to build up before that yeah I think you're right I think it was you know going inside like it was creeping in of like sat looking out the window thinking I'm gonna die alone like I need to have children um I don't have a big family I don't have any brothers and sisters um and so I I think that was creeping and then I think when I like when we sat there and spoke I literally was like oh my god this yeah he I will dump these men for you <laughs> they're all dead now these men are dead <laughs> and <laughs> um and then from that day on we have not separated and not parted and it Does was his, his account the same of that day yeah his his account is more like um like I've you know I've got an eight-year-old kid you have to you know you have to get on with him and that's there's more rules <laughs> I think with yeah, him. yeah yeah uh what you can't wear those shoes there? ever again yeah that kind of thing <laughs> like <laughs> so yeah I think that was his his take on things are a lot different which I find brilliant and funny because he's just so honest but yeah and then it was crazy because from that day forward we were hanging out together going to each other's houses and it was like we needed a house together we, we yeah. kind of made mature adult decisions from then on forward and was that it was it all happening really quickly as well I'd say it was but also because we knew each other for years beforehand it yeah. felt like we already knew each other and that we were sort of instantly busy mates like it yeah. was mental it, it was crazy that everything he said he was like you know you don't have to agree with everything I'm saying I was like no I do agree because we actually get on and we like the same things I was like I will tell you and I don't like something but right now everything we like is the same yeah so yeah there's also that thing that when when you meet someone when you get older you kind of you're, you're when you meet someone you you know you throw everything at it rather than when you're younger yeah. I feel like you don't really it's all I don't know it things take a lot longer when you're younger whereas when you're yeah. older you don't you don't wait around yeah, and I think when you're younger as well, you sort of are thinking, oh, is the grass greener? Like, is yeah. there something? It, do I need to complete my life doing this? Do I need to travel? Or Whereas, yeah, when you, like, and you say when you're older, you sort of think, actually, I've done those things. That doesn't entice me anymore to, like, go crazy or do that. You just kind of want to find someone to belong to, I think. Yeah. yeah. And when did you start talking babies? So this was a weird time actually I think I do things quite like you know out outwardly crazy <laughs> I remember we were leaving the house I was going to work he was going to work and we were leaving his house and I remember going oh I forgot to take my pill and I ran it like I was in my bag and he was at the door trying to like lock it like come on you need to leave the house we need to go and I was like where's my pill so I took it like in front of him yeah and I just was like and then I thought oh that was a strange feeling like I was taking a pill in front of him that's going to stop us ever having a baby so as I was driving to work that moment I was like having this revelation I need to I want to tell him I'm going to ask I'm not asking but tell him should I take the pill anymore like are you okay with me you know how do we feel about that and it was a moment of then I went to my mum and go mum what do you think about this like <laughs> should I take a pill anymore like I find Ollie is the best and she was like well yeah he is great he's amazing yeah he's pretty you know he's the best you've ever you know and so it was all these moments and then I think I found Karen Richardson at work and was like <laughs> Karen I think I want to stop taking the pill <laughs> <laughs> you must be like okay <laughs> so yeah there was these moments of like this penny dropping and Ollie was like well okay if you feel like that I mean I yeah and that, that was the moment of us think connecting and clarifying that maybe we do want babies together because he'd, he'd sort of said well I do want children with you because you know you're pretty good with like my son and I was like you're you're amazing dad like you are incredible and so yeah. I was like yeah this is yeah so it was from that day <laughs> from that day and then how long were you trying for before you fell pregnant so then well, then you get an app and everything don't you and you sort oh, did you of do all of that stuff yeah because they teach you at school that it's like you know you look at a penis and you're pregnant and really it's like <laughs> there's a science like, to it <laughs> yeah you think actually no you've got to be ovulating on this time and that can only happen then and you know the, the semen's in your body for five days and possibly that can happen but so you, you do sort of then go on like this 
crazy like whirlwind, don't you, of like becoming a <laughs> a baby maker. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you said, like a scientist. A, I love the fact that you've gone from I'll just stop taking the pill to now yeah. I'm downloading the apps. And Ollie yeah. has to come home and go, Oh, okay, but that's where we are. <laughs> yeah. And also, you know, you have to lie on your back with your legs in the air for half an hour. Yeah. Like there's so many things you have to do in order to have like make this. So it it was like a good few months, I think. Um a good few I I count months by the periods. I remember having yeah. like maybe three periods or something and so and then eventually we got oh I remember one time of being super horny like really like ah! and obviously now we realize that's because you're ovulating and yeah. the woman has that in her so, uh, and I remember like again again and he was like <laughs> whoa this is the best day of my life <laughs> and I think it was like literally six consecutive times and he was like wow and, you know like and it was in a, it was a point where my mum lived next door in my house as well and she kept trying to come around and I was like no uh, barricade the door this is not okay like this is embarrassing like we need to move out um and so yeah I think that was the day that created the quads to be fair <laughs> I, I honestly think that sex like that is mm. you know it is your like you say it's your body kind of going I'm yeah. I'm ready let's yeah. make this happen <laughs> but so yeah. often we get stuck in no 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 it's now because the app says this yeah, yeah. And, you know I, I mean We're many prime. people I know have had surprise babies it is off the back of that kind of sex yeah 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 well because like you said you're like as a lady your body is going now is the time we're ready it's key moment we're prime and give it me so and I think Obviously, the man's just ready at any time. <laughs> <laughs> when you think about inside the body, uh, the female body, you're, we're told so often that it's quite a hostile hostile environment for that, yeah. those North swimmers to make their way through. Yeah. You know, So on those yeah. days, I feel like they're, all the barricades are down. And it's like, Great. open house time. <laughs> yeah, we're welcoming. There's welcome mats. There's a parade. <laughs> a penis parade. <laughs> <laughs> Walking down the streets. Woohoo! Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's such a good image <laughs> like a Disney parade but through your uterus yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear and then, when did your symptoms like did you think you might be pregnant but was, did you start having symptoms or were you late well yeah so these symptoms obviously at this moment I didn't know how how many was bubbling inside so I was getting extremely angry, extremely hungry. Like everything was so extreme. Yeah. Like my mum was like, oh my God, like you've been a bit dramatic. And Ollie was like asking all his women mates, like is she supposed to be this like, you know, angry and aggressive? And <clears throat> my, like I wasn't understanding. I was like, you don't understand. I'm tired. And I was like, I'm quite dramatic anyway. So this level was just, it, it, I wouldn't want anyone to like know me then really I just I kept saying like I just want to go and live on the side of a mountain in a spa and just be alone <laughs> 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 and I just remember saying all these terrible things of like horrible things I didn't mean but obviously it was hormones and then obviously it was like times four so like when we did find that out, I was like, because <laughs> 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 then my mum was like, I'm oh, sorry. And Ollie was like, all oh, right. <laughs> so I think I was kind of a bit relieved that it was that extreme yeah. and for that reason. Yeah. So when you first <laughs> took the test, though, was mm. it off the back of any of those sort of horror, like those outbursts? Had so it gone, was come on, Georgie just do a test yeah, we need this to... isn't you because <laughs> you were a mess <laughs> well it, it I mean those feelings were starting so I was a bit snappy so I do think people were like all right oh she's got a man now she thinks she is but um I, I think it was literally the day of not no period like the app says no period so I was like yeah. right, let's try this now um and it was pregnant and it was like oh, oh my god we had to sit down we had a minute we can all he didn't believe it we had to do four other ones we had to go to tesco in the middle of the night and be secretive because i'm like i'm on the telly people will know <laughs> but nobody cares because nobody watches so they were like you know we were sneaking pregnancy tests we did i think we did at least five pregnancy tests to really make sure and i was like i like we're, we're genuine like i think we're pregnant yeah. like we can say now yeah 
yeah and what was it like going for your first scan so we what was our first scan I think we paid for one um that was like um an early scan I think we yeah. may have done um not not like just literally thinking oh we just want to know we just want to pay for it I think maybe because we were a bit like we didn't want people to know I was pregnant so going to a, a hospital might have been a bit um you know out there yeah so we didn't kind of want to know yeah. yeah so we went to a private place <laughs> I remember this so much I, I even like changed my name because we were wearing masks <laughs> and I think, you know it, it, maybe I was just hormonal craziness um and so we went up to the the room and the lady put the gel on and she was like oh and I was like we sat there and I was next to me holding my hand and there was a big scream and we lay down and she was like like not speaking and like just like rubbing this like thing on my belly and was like uh, hmm. and then like back to a computer like did a little and then like back on me and then like did a little and she was like mm-hmm. and then she went right I need you to go to the hospital and we were like all right okay yeah and she was like like tomorrow like can you can you go as soon as possible and we were like oh right oh this is did you think something like, was it... wrong by this point so she was it wasn't like she was being sad or anything it was yeah. like she was just confused like she'd she said she said I've never seen this before so I was like right what does she does she does she she wasn't like saying oh this is that thing she just said you need a second opinion but and um a proper one like uh, you need to go to hospital so and on the on the screen there was like three circles and a big circle so right. obviously I'd never seen anything before so I was like right that must be my womb or like that was like my like it looks like you know the canals of your heart or something when they show you yeah. that scan so I was like oh wow all these circles that's cool so then we booked an appointment for the so hospital did she say triplets to you or anything like at that no. point no okay. she didn't even say anything like oh she said there could be three right here so we yeah so that and was also it, you're things right. yeah. you've got three puppies in there well done you've got three <laughs> little dogs <laughs> <laughs> so she yes yeah, she did say i can see three sacks that's what she said sacks. right so i was like all right sacks what a sack so she said there could be triplets so ollie lost his mind he went whoa what he went pale he didn't speak i was like oh wow triplets jeez and I remember leaving that room being like, whoa, that's a lot. Like, that is a lot. And he was like, we have to change the car. Like, I can't, I can't drive a car that's bigger than, I don't want to drive a minibus. So he was more in the minds of car. Like, you know, thinking, yeah. yeah, like he's thinking, we can't really afford three. And I'm like, whoa, three. Okay, that's cute. So then we get to this hospital the next day and the woman literally is the, like the same, like, scan gel moving this around uh put something that, that can't I think I don't think she put anything in don't know what, how she measured it but she literally was on her computer for a good half an hour like really long and we're all silent and we've all got masks on because we uh, you just couldn't see anyone's expression as well so we were yeah. like so okay what like what were you hearing so and she turned to me like and was like so we've, I've actually counted four literally Ollie like he literally lost his mind in silence and I was like four four and then I was swearing I was like I can't hold fucking four I was like I'm too small like I didn't shut up and this one was like "Mm -hmm." and Ollie was like in a trance (laughs) so then we left with I think a picture of like four circles and like a Big a little dot in a bit it was just really complicated really hard to understand and we literally walked out of that place like wow like four like we we didn't I don't know if we were to be happy or sad like we didn't know yeah. how to be well because I imagine you don't know anyone that's got quads and that's the thing like I had nobody to connect with talk to to say so how do you deal with this like what goes on it like what and so then we had to like google everything and like and by this point I'm so huge like you could see my boobs from the back like I my belly was massive already like and I thought I will just be a vessel of you'll have to put me on a cart 
carry me around. Like, there's no way I will be able to, like, my body's just, I'm five foot two and like a pindly little toothpick legs. Like, I'm just, so there was all these thoughts going through our heads of like, wow. And obviously Ollie's like, a minibus, I just can't. Did you tell your mum or did you tell your mum? Yes, my mum. <laughs> my mum was like, yeah right for it's going to be four right I will take them all swimming I will I've knit them cardies I'll start now like she was well in for four she she was excited also though four. I <laughs> I wonder if for your mum because your nan was such a massive role in your life because your mum mm. was single you know single mumming and taking on all that all of those roles there's something about grandchildren that makes you go well I'm gonna take on this role now well yeah I mean, she did at that point. I mean, now I'm like, Julie, remember your training. But like, <laughs> she, she did think as well, because she was one of four. So I think she saw it as like, wow, all at once, four. Yeah. So she, I think she did initially think, right, I'm going to put, I was thinking, I'm going to have to give them away at Christmas. Like they're going to have to meet when they're 20, <laughs> like have this reunion. I'm like, who loves babies the most? They can have one. Like, <laughs> so because it, it was a bit of a jokey thing as well. Yeah. Because we were absolutely in shock about, but like, like overachiever, like everything. like. <laughs> and because there was four and your body was changing rapidly because Rapid. of that. Yeah. Did yeah. you have to tell people like work, like being on set and all yeah. of that stuff yeah you're so right so obviously it, because it was changing so fast like you said it, you know you there's a time limit of in your life where you tell people so, yeah. you know so um just what people do which I think we should change that but um so I had to pull people into like a change room I remember pulling the head of costume in and just going right so I've got a little situation so I'm pregnant and she was like oh, yeah. and I went hold on no 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 so but um there's a thing now it, 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 like it's quite early on she was like oh my god Jordan, this is amazing so I went no 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 so it's still it's not one it's not two and it's not three and I kind of relished a bit in the way of like telling people because I was like <laughs> it, I needed the build up like yeah. working in telly you know you need the build up and I was like it's four and they were like <gasps> and they, they didn't they didn't like go wow they all went wow uh and they they weren't like they're, they're happy then they were like in shock and then a bit like worried and then I think they went through all these emotions of what are you gonna do and I was like I know it's and they were like, <laughs> then they laughed hysterically because we were like nervous about it and they're like you Jordan, more people oh. <laughs> so yeah and then and then telling people one by one it was you know like it was a big moment to tell people and they kind of didn't believe me but then believe me and I have to show them the picture and they're like yeah. wow so it was yeah it was like a like a month of being like what on earth like oh. <laughs> yeah and it is a very odd thing that we keep well, it's it's obviously a very personal thing. So some people just think feel like they have to keep mm, a secret for yeah. a while. Um yeah. but it, it is a strange thing that we have the society thing where we keep it quiet until we're twelve weeks and we don't tell yeah. anyone, you know, yeah. just in case. But yeah. if the just in case, you know, if that happens, then actually you need people oh. to understand where you're at. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. As well, in that moment you think you well in the beginning it's hard because all of a sudden you're tired you're hungry you're narky you're like and I need to not tell anyone why I'm tired you need to be professional go and go and do your job uh, yeah I need to go and puke in the toilet secretly come back and be like okay we're ready how you like I'll take your appointment or whatever so you have to hide all this and I think if you'd have just said guys I'm early stages of pregnant like can you just give me a break and they'd be like yeah you know what I totally I'll give you a minute and then obviously you know you've got the risk of losing you know the baby and that's when you need people the most like yeah. you know it's the time when you're like I've been hopeful all this time and now I've got no one to tell that you know I, I've lost the baby or be excited with and then be sad with because you do you want people around you to go do you know what I had a miscarriage as well and 
you don't nobody tells anyone until you've told them yeah because everybody absolutely. sort of keeps it yeah to themselves and so you think once you tell people that's when people I've known I've known people for years at work and they've gone I've and I'm like oh my god wow like you've yeah. never said because you can't connect with someone because they But also not, I think so... sometimes if someone's not there in life like mm. in that place in life so it's such a far away idea yeah you know, yeah maybe yeah. Um, yeah there's no way to know what to say to someone if you've not been there I suppose and, no yeah. um so after that initial initial scan did you then go for more frequent scans because obviously at that point for like quads it's a it's a higher risk yeah yeah so then I we had to sort of go weekly then um to scans because I think as well I think the nurses were quite um not tiptoey but they obviously thought well this is high risk in ways of they could just be like they'll be on one placenta or like there's you know it's damaging for me it's like I'm I'm at risk sort of thing as well there's all these complications and all these scary moments of what could happen and <clears throat> but just to keep an eye on us and we sort of I, I think we I think this I don't remember them saying I think I don't remember them talking much about our quads because they'd never come across this yeah. and they'd come across triplets but I don't think quads was in their area and um, mm-hmm. so I don't think they had much to say to us about it um but we'd obviously google stuff and that's when you just hear the most extreme things don't you and you're like god and I remember just Ollie being worried all the time and just thinking like am I going to be okay um and then obviously so then they're keeping track on us because uh I think then it's just more you can lose one you can lose two yeah. Then they sort of started saying the options of you can terminate one, you can terminate two, you can terminate. Gosh. And I was like, absolutely not. Like, I am not going to take one away from, yeah. you know, a pack, <laughs> yeah. as it were. Like, the football team will be together. Like, they, you know, I thought, it, it, what if two were a twin and another two were, and you'd take mm. one. Like, I just, all my maths then was just coming out of, like, no, I just can't yeah. decide that kind of thing and so they did keep an eye on and it was like a good like I don't know how far we were I feel like it was a good three or four months yeah that we but I was really in mean, the heartbeats you know, and everything would have been so like a drum band in there well it, it, they were so I think they were sort of developing but they're not developing so then right. it was becoming to the point where later on in the scans they were like they've not uh, gone any further yeah. So I was like, and this is the mis- miscarriage sort of thing. You're still pregnant and they're still in there and they're still, um, you know, um, fe- um, fetuses. Yeah. But they're not developing any further. Yeah. So they had to keep an eye on how that was going. And so the course of like the three months or the three and a half months that we got to, they said now they've not developed any further. So we're going to have to, like get rid of them basically and take them out and that that... shock when they first even brought up the subject of things not progressing yeah because then obviously then it was like oh not even one is you know surviving so it it was a bit it was upsetting but I I was a bit more sort of hard-faced um for Raleigh it was harder like he I remember we did a little video and it was just, he broke down and I thought, oh God, that he's taking it harder because he doesn't like giving up and that's yeah. in his nature. And so, you know, there was a chance of four, he thought, like possibly one out of the four. Whereas me personally, I was like, it's all or nothing. Like they're there together and they'll be together sort of thing. And in a way we had to try and not think of them as sort of babies yet we had to just think we didn't quite get that far so yeah, yeah. in order to sort of yeah. <clears throat> and then when they said that it's 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 they're not progressing anymore and you know that in, in a way we've got to I guess yeah remove well, re- so yeah so what they said well, they gave us four options basically they said well we've never done this before so the risks are really high we you could um we could wait for them to just release on their own um but I was like I I can't be like on set in Theresa McQueen tiny hot pants 
and just you know a floodgate open like we don't know how much would come yeah. out so I think if you know if you've had a miscarriage you see how much blood there is it's a lot and for four I was like I can't take that option and I can't keep being pregnant when yeah. you know it's not <clears throat> they're not there um because my hormones were insane and it was just you know you just want to think let's get them out so yeah um, and those also, you know, take them out while you're awake and they're like, but this is a very high risk. Um, we've never done this before. We could ruin the womb sort of thing. So I was like, I want to go under surgery. I want to be, you know, unconscious. I just want to not be traumatized by this moment. Um, and I don't want to know what happens. And so the, but then they had to talk to us about how really dangerous it is. Like, you don't know how much blood I'm going to lose. And this was like sort of really sad for Ollie as well, because he was like, god this is really scary like yeah. you you know they were like there's a chance you might not survive and I was like god, okay so we kind of on this day was like extra sad because nobody knew what was going to happen and how it was going to be and it must have been um, so scary yeah yeah it was really scary and also we wanted my womb intact as well because obviously we still want to try for baby so they were like there's a chance that the womb might be you know um scraped or something it's not mm. damaged um and so it was pretty yeah pretty massive daunting day really this day but I felt like confident you just had to do it just got to be strong yeah. and we just went in for the surgery really what was it like coming around afterwards so coming around afterwards um Ollie like literally stayed there the whole time so he was there when I came around and I was like drowsy and stuff, fell asleep. But I was like, I'm alive, yes. I remember waving to everyone in the hotel. I think I was so, <laughs> like, you super high, aren't you? Just like, whoa, I've been through, hi. And I was like cheering, like, great, thanks, everyone. Um, <laughs> thank you for being there. Um, and... Then I had to go straight to the toilet and I remember grabbing Ollie and go, come to the toilet with me. And he was like, I don't do well with blood. And he, like I made him come to the toilet with me and everything. And I just thought, right, look at this. And he was like, oh my God, there's a lot of blood. And I was like, oh, what's this? And I thought, we're in this together. Like we see everything together. And he just looked after me the whole time. But he was just like happy I was there, I think. And yeah. coming around, I was a bit like, oh, yeah, it was pretty sad. But what was really got me and I think the whole time I blocked things out but this moment was they do a little care package the hospital which bless them it was just lovely but they do a little box and they give you a teddy and you know they because they say what do you want to do with the remains and stuff and yeah. I was like it's fine you know if you want to bury that's fine um but they give you a teddy for your bit and there was four teddies and each little teddy was like, you know, its little ear was bigger on one side, and one little leg was like so like that. And I thought, oh, it had been individual little babies. Yeah. And at that moment, I was like, oh god, yeah, that's pretty sad. Yeah. And that's where I was like, oh, that's, yeah. And I think then after that was, you know, that was when your hormones really kick in, and you literally are like wow what is like I mean Ollie then afterwards our relationship was tested massively um I'd say probably in that month after was just extremes I think of emotions and stuff would you say that whilst you were going through it you know in terms of the scans and not knowing what was going on maybe we're a bit more pragmatic and then afterwards, you allowed yourself to emotionally, well, you had no choice but to emotionally yeah. get all that in. Yeah, because I think as well, you know, as a woman, you you, you know, like you have a period every month. You think, oh, that was a period that could have been a, a bit like a yeah. miscarriage or a baby. You just think. Mm. And then I think I had to sort of think of it like that. Like, okay, well, then it would have been a period. And so yeah. that, there we go. Whereas I think the hormones after... Because maybe, I, I mean, I don't know scientifically, maybe my body still was like, oh, you should still be pregnant. Mm. But you've, you've, you know, you've removed it yourself. So your body hasn't removed it. Maybe that's why. But I remember just like, we were arguing and stuff. And I was just like, you have to tell me what you're feeling and thinking. Because he'd like keep it in a bit at times. And then he'd 
you know he'd he'd like let loose and tell me everything and I was like oh okay and so we we were really lucky with each other that we opened up so much maybe in an argument of way but then we came around afterwards and was like just so caring so loving so understanding and so like oh it's not just me the mum that's been through this yeah like Ollie as the dad has, has suffered loss and also he's not been able to do anything physically emotionally like he didn't have the, it's a very know, the helpless pain. position to be in yeah 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 and and so he felt like he couldn't say anything at the time but now I was like you have to because you are part of it it is partnership it is team thoughts so yeah were you able to take time away from from work and commitments uh, I think I had a, a few yeah I think I had a few weeks off um I don't think I wanted too much off though because I think I, I needed to go well do you know what this I need to get back into life and yeah it, this can't be my reason for living like this you know yeah there's, I mean it's happened it's you know things are say to other women what we've been through I mean, I'm still waiting for a quadruplet mother to talk to me. But... <laughs> <laughs> have you not found Tell one me. yet? <laughs> no, I, I I have met quadruplets, but I'm like, where's your mother? Like, tell me what she went <laughs> um, So, yeah, and I, I, it, I didn't want it to define me as a person. Yeah. But I do, you know, I'm. it's an extreme thing that I do. And also, about, so. you, you see the power in sharing that. You know, yeah, having yeah. someone speak about the fact of going through a mis- miscarriage and what that yeah. does to your body and emotionally, and and I think um, it's a very it's a very lonely grief because yeah. because you're told not to tell anyone until you're a certain amount of weeks pregnant, and then so when those massive things that you don't even know, you don't know the vocab around it, you don't know all those the lingo. So when yeah. those things are being thrown at you, it's all really overwhelming, yeah. and you have that that high of something that you've wanted and you've achieved and then all of a sudden there's a crashing low and it's so tied in with all those dreams and hopes that you have for your future that is now looking different yeah you well you do start to plan don't you of like what you know what they could be what the names are things like that and then you think oh we need to put an extension on the house we need to (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we need helpers we need carers I need a carer for me like I would have needed a barrel to be put in to be put on an offset so yeah you do sort of that is the you know the, the ideas you start to think and then you go oh well that's gone but then I think it was great with Ollie because then we went right well now we can go on this holiday and now we can do this and now yeah. we know that we had we had it and we lost it so now we know we want it so we were even stronger together and even more into like having a family and and I was like that means we can have four then and he was like absolutely not like let's just try (laughs) you still don't want to change the car (laughs) (laughs) I've got a lorry we could have a lorry like we can literally (laughs) (laughs) so I think things like that puts you in your mind of like well okay now we know as a couple that we did want it so hard and we were ready for it so we can still keep trying rather than you know thinking oh that was the end yeah because of your uterus did you have to wait a while before starting to to think about trying again yeah I think they did say like wait for a period so which isn't long really is it I think we wait for a period and then sort of you can try again but what what was crazy was we did fall pregnant again and this was in this was before forest so we fell and I was skiing um in Switzerland and I was I've always told Ollie how great I was at skiing and I just was really bad and I thought <laughs> dear reason and it was because I was pregnant and I was like yes, I was I really good at this <laughs> I am a professional skier I'll have you know you'll be so impressed <laughs> you'll want to ski behind me <laughs> but I was so bad and then we did and then that was a miscarriage but to be honest it didn't feel as extreme as the thought. And it was just like, right, we've got this. We know what happens. We're fine. We'll just keep trying. And I think I think having that was like, right, you know, miscarriages happen. It became yeah. a thing of we have to, and lots of people, like the amount of people that messaged me in DMs and was like, I've never spoke about it. I've only just, from your story, this and this. And I'm like, yeah, 
That's what was that really... like from going from being that that feeling isolated within that and then mm. sharing it? Because you did an amazing interview with Fabulous Magazine where you spoke mm. about uh, about your, about your pregnancy, and I can just and you and I remember you posted on Instagram and said I'm 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 t- I'm going away for a few days. I'm not going to be looking yeah. at my phone. Um, yeah, yeah but there must have just been a massive influx of messages and personal stories yeah which you know actually that really surprised me and I actually didn't expect anyone anyone to tell me theirs because people do keep it in don't yeah. they and they just don't want it I was like wow okay this is you know relieved me even more to think god yeah so many people have been through this and mm. I think like I said before if you don't share your story why would anybody want to share theirs with you so I do I I literally connected with so many more people and so many more women and men about that and so I'm so glad I did because we were a bit worried about it because you know we didn't want it to be like oh I'm doing it in a magazine to be like back in the day you know it was a very hard decision and Ollie was a bit you know worried about it because he was like but this is like this is us and I was like yeah but I've got a platform where I can you know I think I actually remember he had to say he said to me tell me reasons why we should do this interview like tell me because you know he's a man in not in the public eye and he was a bit worried about what it would come across and how it would other women would think or whatever and I had to and I remember I I, I was naked because I knew that that would fight my corner and do me really well (laughs) and I (laughs) I gave him you know really good reasons why we should we should do this interview and was like okay (laughs) I, I get it now I understand you're passionate about telling people your you know your life and your truth and I was like yeah it's important yeah. and then afterwards he was like I'm glad we did and I was like yeah I'm glad we did it's it, it's really helped a lot of people yeah yeah it's amazing mm. um when you fell pregnant with Forrest what mm. was that what was it fi- like finding out that time like did you dare to dream did you dare to get excited about it yeah this was a tough one actually this time round, I and because as well it happened again and I was a bit like yeah. we this time I went right we're not allowed to get excited I literally you know I told friends and family around I was like that's another thing is when you tell your friends and family again and they go oh do we like they don't want to get excited for you yeah. they think they're a bit on pins and so you're sort of putting your pressures on them a bit so I was a bit like okay we can't really tell everyone again and I really made sure we got far into it like I told my closest friends because I thought I need the support again like I just want to tell you and we really had to get to milestones this time before I let us get excited Mm. or before we did anything and I think even my mum and Ollie's mum were a bit like, so when can we can we get excited? Like you you've got a bump now, like you are show like you're showing. And I was still a bit like, okay, I think maybe now we can. And I remember Ollie's going, let's go to the like trapper center and get like a baby girl. And I was like, <gasps> and I felt like a bit like a bit of a fraud. I was like, I don't know, but like, I had a big bump and I was waddling, <laughs> and it you know it's time to to do these things and uh, we've got the bit ba- like the baby grow in a blanket and I was like oh my god okay I think we can get excited and then I started thinking right now we can relax a bit I mean you're still very stressed aren't you like mm. you know you're still a bit uh, so but bit by bit I was like okay we can be happy by this and it was I think it was probably quite sad for me being the controlling one being like okay we can laugh we can laugh now we can be happy <laughs> <laughs> there's so much going on and I, and I think when you when your first pregnancy or any pregnancy after a, after a miscarriage it takes the innocence away you know what I mean yeah. it, it means yeah. that you're no longer going into it in a naive way not thinking yeah. that those things happen you have yeah. experience of that happening you have that experience of the wipe and the blood and or the yeah. crap like, so it's every little twinge you're so much more in tune with yeah yeah you're right and like you know there was a, a point when like the baby wasn't moving one day and I literally saw the hospital and we went there or 
like I, I bumped into something and I was like right we have to go to hospital and you do sort of you do have a higher extreme panic and you know you get there and they go it's fine it's okay and you go yeah but I'm glad I did yeah. like I, I don't I don't want to be that person that goes oh it's a bit much like you've been I'm like no I will go there I will yeah. I want to see the baby move heartbeat everything yeah and then that's when we bought so many scans like we did like we We've got so many pictures of him in literally <laughs> every position. <laughs> well, and was that you sort of checking in and just kind of making mm. sure he's fine, he's fine, he's fine? Yeah, 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 absolutely. And even at work, I was a bit like, I'm, I'm not going over these hours. Like, I will not. I really? Will be, yeah, I was. I, I, I probably a bit annoying, really, but I was just like, I don't care. This is, you know, this. But is... that's because as an actor, you're told to just say yes at the time. You yeah, know, and just kind of go along with it. So actually, you yeah. probably should never have been going over your hours, and should no. should be standing up for yourself. And you know, yeah. Well, it, I remember we were doing the explosion in the Hollywood, uh, Hollywood, Hollyoaks Village. <laughs> that was a dream. Um, <laughs> Hollyoaks Village, and it was fire and things like that. And I had to scream. At, um, you know, Teresa and Goldie were screaming, and I was like, "Is this? Is my baby going to think like you know this is a stressful moment? Like this flame?" And they were like, look, if you don't want to do it, it's fine. And I was like, no, it's okay. I'll, I'll go to where I can go to, limit. But then I will be like, no, I'm leaving. Like, I'm going, yeah. I'm doing it. And they were great about it. And we, you know, we got the shots, we got the things and things like that. So I thought, I can't be too, too precious. Yeah. Because, you know, other people have been through this. You know, other people are like, so we're like, are you just pregnant? I'm like, yeah, no, but <laughs> like, you know, I'm a one in a million person who had quads and I'm just like, I need to... I'm dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> did you give any thought to birth? How, did you have a birthing plan? You know, <laughs> the face of it all, Georgie. <laughs> well, so I, I, I mean, I was like, I just want the easiest way. Like, I'm not, God bless you women who give birth naturally. I was like, hell no. He as well, whenever we'd go to the scans, like the woman was like, oh, his head is measuring big. And I was like, have you seen the size of my man's head? That's a big head. And his shoulders were wide. And I was like, is this wide shoulders? What even does that mean? And I was like, my hips are not even like that big. So I instinctively, straight away, I was like, I need an elective C-section. Like, I can't even bear. And actually, I think even as a kid, I've always been like, sunroof option sounds like a great, fun moment. Like, like I think I'd always be like, oh, yeah, too posh to push. I mean, not posh, but, you know, I always thought, oh, that's quite cool. So I was lucky enough as well. We've got um, a midwife who is a, like one of Ollie's friends. That's yeah. how we we knew her so she was like I will midwife you and I was like yes I will talk to you we'll go for lunches we will literally I'll talk so much about this and I was like I want a c-section done out she's like are you sure I was she's like war birth I was like absolutely no 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 mm. and obviously you know you have to say and I was like no my mental health and my anxiety cannot you know be at that moment where what if something also, happens you've gone or... through so much oh, to get to that point much. was part yeah. of it also eliminating risk and just kind of going I know and, yeah. and taking some control because so much of it had been taken out of your hands so kind of going yeah this is something that I can control yeah and that makes me feel like I'm in a safer place yeah I, I definitely think that is the case I have not been able to control any emotion feelings anything like that keep a baby in you know it was just too much to think I'm going to learn to breathe again in a way that will help you know what I mean I'm like yeah. reading these books mindful pregnancy and I was just I, can't, I just can't these things are not even in my mind I just thought I'm trusting doctors I trust with what happened with the miscarriage I trust these doctors must know what they're doing and to be honest it was the best option for me yeah it was amazing what and that's, we... what, that's the important thing because so often yeah. we get buried in the views of other people and what they would do or what yeah. they think but actually it's about what works for you and what's helpful to you yeah. not about anyone else no and you know I had so much trust in Sandy our midwife and 
she knows me as well like what I wanted and you know those are those books where you like have candles and meditation music and fairy lights and you know and a breeze and a, a man that rubs your back and we literally arrived on the day like a nail appointment and Ollie was in full scrubs like George Clooney like I couldn't take my eyes off him I was literally like you are so fit <laughs> and his little hair neck and we were there for hours because, you know, people were getting put in front of us, which I was like, I know, fair enough. If there's a minute, like, yeah, that's great. Like, and I was in my little socks pulled up and my open bare bum, you know, <laughs> <laughs> little cape walking around. And we walk there and Ollie's like a bit squeamish. And I'm like, this is going to be fine. Like, we're going to be fine. And there was Christmas music on. There was like 14 doctors. I was like, we're in a safe place. Like, this is cool. There was like floodlights shining down on my fanny. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, what does it look like down there? Is it okay? How's that not been looking for it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not shaved for months. What about it? Can you find the hole? <laughs> Put a catheter in. I was like, oh, to be honest, the catheter was the worst thought for me. It was like, oh my God, a catheter in there. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, the doctor was brilliant. He was like, all fun and they were like are we ready and I was like yeah and he was like didn't mean you George I meant the doctors <laughs> doing the procedure I was like okay I'm too keen <laughs> and Ollie was like at my head and he was like should we do small talk I was like are you joking what do you what, what? talk about what, what? Talk? <laughs> yeah he went he literally said that <laughs> there's a baby no he went okay and he was like he kept talking and like didn't shut up and I was just like I think it was nerves then, absolutely because he I remember I had to bit, prick his finger once for like an allergy test and it literally took four hours and he was like I'm not ready I can't do it the blood the blood and I was like oh my god so he he is not a blood man like he was like oh, he goes pale and almost pain. and then he <laughs> he was he was more tense and more stressed and my um, I'd faked tan as well before of <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Um, and um, I like you know the thing the wire that goes in your hand just kept slipping off and the woman was like e you're too slippery and I was like oh it's moisturizer and I don't know why I did all this prep like I should have just because you're meeting your baby and you wanted to be your best <laughs> I don't want him to judge me like he's gonna have high standards <laughs> I'm like ew I want your nails done <laughs> what is this what have Ew. I been born into yeah like no thanks see ya <laughs> but yeah and then it, but literally I remember them just like pushing on my chest a bit and I all felt like 10 minutes like I was like this is wonderful 10 minutes of my life where they were like we've got him and I was like oh and they were like baby forest is here and he popped over the little curtain and his fingers were so long like mine, like dripping with blood. And I remember looking at his hair and it was all blonde. And I went, wow, it's blonde. And I think that was my first thoughts. Like, okay, that's crazy. Like, how exciting. And Ollie was like, oh, my God. And then he had to go and cut the cord. And he was like, it took ages and the scissors weren't working and there was blood everywhere and I couldn't handle. And then he said he walked past and he had a look inside inside of me and he went why did I do that that was the worst idea <laughs> <laughs> he was like Jesus I didn't expect that and he was doing all sorts of wrong things in his mind and I was just like wow like you know you, you try and squish them in that little space yeah you've got the curtain in your neck and you're like oh I love him but it's just like it's just no yeah, what was that like having Forrest like with you on oh, you? Oh, I mean, the last two weeks of pregnancy or last two months was just hell on earth. I was like, get him out. I need him in my arms. Like, I want him so much. So, the relief of him just out there and holding him, I was just like, wow. Yes, yeah, finally, like, you made it. Like, you're here. And I was just like, I, I, I remember my cheeks were hurting because I couldn't stop smiling. I couldn't stop laughing. Like, I was laughing. I was like, <laughs> this is great. <laughs> I was like, look at his little woolly hat. Like, why is he wearing a hat? <laughs> what is he that? wearing hat? that inside? Was that in there? What is he doing? Did I eat wool? <laughs> was there a sense of... Um, of everything that you'd been through like did it feel like it was everything coming together like did 
the, the arrival of Forrest make you reflect on everything? Maybe not in that moment, but mm, do you think yeah. that was a part of that laughter and that those smiles and yeah, the emotion I, that you would have yeah, felt? I, yeah, I think the relief of like, him being there after so much had gone on was like a bit of a hysterical moment probably like it probably transformed into like a ah oh, like a relief and like a like a hysterical laughter but yeah I think as well thinking like just I, I as well I didn't remember instantly loving him it was an instant relief like yeah. of like going oh my god thank god you're here like you arrived and it was more like, this is what you're meant, like, you're meant to be Forrest, it's meant to be you, like, it's meant to be him. Yeah. Yeah. And that made more sense, I think. Yeah. <laughs> that was beautiful. Mm -hmm. How was your recovery? So, <laughs> I remember the, instantly being back in the hotel, um, hotel, in you the You've referred um, to hospital. it a hotel before. <laughs> I'm like, I'll go with it. <laughs> like, if Georgie wants to think that she's been spending time in a hotel where she's been in a hospital, I'll just go with it. I'm not going to correct that. So... <laughs> what kind of hotel me? is this? <laughs> imagine, they have a spa. Imagine a hotel with like room service. What's going on in there? They're hysterically <laughs> laughing. There's David. There's blood everywhere. Um, that was, I don't know if I said a hotel. So the hospital. <laughs> Um, I mean, it felt like I was, it was, um, I remember like being wheeled in, baby was there. I never held a baby as well before this. Like I don't hold babies. Like I was not, I'm not, like people There's would have me. There's a difference between baby and newborn baby. Cause newborn oh, babies are like well, something else. It, it's like, it's like a, a little mechanical toy. Like <laughs> it, the way they move is like, and you're like, oh my gosh, you're, what is like, it's not, it's unnatural, isn't it? It's just weird to go like this. And then but you need to just ugh, love it, skin on skin. Yeah, boob, get the boob in. But um, I just, and I remember we had like visitors, like we had Ollie's son. And also, not forget in the England match, the first game was on and that was on. Like that. I mean, obviously we I, can't forget that. I mean, fuck. we had, Ollie wanted to bring his gym kit. Is he messing? He was like, I'll go to the gym halfway through. I went, you're whoa, that is, that is outrageous. Like what? <laughs> I mean, I had to have chats about that. So... <laughs> I thought, okay, football match, yeah, you can put that on, but Jim. <laughs> um, so I remember lots of visitors, like Ollie's mum, my mum, um, my mum's um, man, and I just remember think, like you know, being tending to be okay, being like, hi everyone, how are you? Like thinking, I was like, oh my god, when real reality, I was going, hello, bleh, throwing up in the bin. I tried to move my legs, I tried to get up instantly and walk, and um, like. Sandy midwife came and went, your legs are numb, you cannot move, like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm fine, Whoa. falling over. Like, I I feel like I'm, like, a bit of a strong cookie, and I feel like it doesn't affect me, but I was so out of it, and it was so, like, like, my catheter wasn't filling up and stuff, and they were like, if you don't fill that up, you cannot go home. So I remember every 10 minutes being, like, on the toilet going, we must we, we must we. Really? I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, and having to like get into the zone of weeing because I thought there's no way we are not going home. Like I want to go home, and um, yeah, we just I, like I snuck Ollie in. I was like, he's staying, he's staying over. Like he's in the room with us. Don't care. Yeah. And uh, we just, I was like, we're up all night. This is not a sleepover. We are staying up all night. And he was like, okay. And so we did because obviously you know the baby's just constantly crying and nobody tells you this well, and, like, and if you've had a c-section and you can't really move no you can't that's and really difficult like my sister I remember her being like she had to phone the like bell for the midwife so often because you know the baby would be crying yeah. she'd be able to go yeah. to the baby and yeah you, you like you are out of it your legs are numb you cannot do anything you're this area down here as well I, I, I think I managed to cross my legs and the doctor was like wow you've crossed your legs and I was like Oh, have I? I don't know how that happened. <laughs> but I, I also remember as well, I got a cough like and a, and a cold. Like I had sneezing and coughing. And holy hell, that is the worst thing in the really? world to sneeze and cough with stitches on your stomach. So I think that was my worst. I think picking him up and moving around was like, it was okay. It was like I'd been to the gym for an hour gone hardcore on my stomach I felt right. like that's what I just put in my mind I was like just like you're gonna work out you're fine 
but sneezing and coughing was like oh, I thought I, at you one can't point, control actually, that oh no and you have to have a pillow and you have to do, and apparently you have an anchor stitch in the corner that's like the first one that's the tightest and I thought I'd ripped it open mm. and I was just imagining like my spleen coming out and so like I'd phone the doctors and was like what's going on they were like oh no it's just a really tight stitch you'll be okay but just be careful and I was like <sighs> and what was it like leaving the hospital so we'd left the next day and oh it's, it's weird isn't it because then you're like right and then we'd like put him in the car seat and I remember me and Ollie we argued our first time about the car seat because we couldn't work it out and <laughs> we'd like wave wave goodbye to everyone we're carrying this car seat we put it in and I was like right let me just and he was like no let me do it and I was like well, I just think you need to and then I feel like in our minds we thought is this the beginning of the rest of our lives like trying to outdo each other and then we both got in the front of the car and was like ah. a bit like well, the car seat's fine I think well yeah it looks fine and he's like well he's asleep and then we were like like 24 7 like we we have a baby now and that's yeah. that's insane isn't it mm-hmm. going home with a life like whoa. And getting home, how, like, did it feel really surreal to suddenly you've got this little baby in the mix? Yeah. So then you you put him in little outfits, don't you, and stuff, or that you've washed before. So you've got, like, everything prepped, haven't you? You've got the nursery prep, the cot prep, which they don't go in for, for what, a year? You don't <laughs> yeah. even, like, I, he's not even touched it. There's, like, little scratch mittens that you're trying to get on, and you're like, oh, my, just put these on. And you, you want to do everything, but they just want to sleep, and you're like, look at them for a while don't you and you're like right and then you, you kind of go oh we're sleeping right we'll sleep and then boob all right it was boob and then for the and then the first night as well I think you know we've got one of those cots that goes whoosh, 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 whoosh. Oh, yeah. and it, uh, it was like the waltzes and I was like Jesus he's gonna fly out like what are we doing <laughs> there's all these things you got to think of and then then they just cry and you're like we well, can't sleep with them in the bed no you can't no so we'll have to just do this and then you just you're just constantly on edge. Trying that to was figure it, it I think. out. Yeah, you're just a bit like, oh, he doesn't like that, he wants that, he does this, da 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 and uh. So Are you yeah, constantly you just, on Google or are you just trying to figure out? Constantly on Google, constantly asking everyone, constantly yeah. trying everything, just putting them on the boob at every given moment. Well, how think, was the feeding? Did that come, did that all fall into place quite easily? Or? Yeah, well, apparently I had the perfect nipples for breastfeeding. <laughs> Which, oh, well done you well some of the nurses got quite excited about that that's and, our you know, instagram it, bio <laughs> it was uh yeah a bit of a, a bit of a celeb around the hospital because of that reason <laughs> <laughs> there is that thing i think when you're when you're first feeding in hospital it feels like just everyone comes in everyone sees everything everyone you're, yeah like i i remember one midwife going to me so if you could just you know um hand express the colostrum into this little syringe so we can make sure that we get it get some you know and i was like okay so how how do I do that? Can you do yeah. that? <laughs> I, I yeah. don't know what I'm doing. You squeeze this boob. I've yeah. never met you before. Please do this. <laughs> you just feel completely this helpless. Tube. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, well, I've had these. I've had these boobs for so long. Who knew what else they could do? Like, what, I know. What is this new thing? <laughs> <laughs> it's when it's shooting across the room. I find that just the most incredible oh. thing ever. Insane. He was drowning at one point. He was like, like this, flashing around. I was like, I'm sorry. I just no plug. How do I stop this? <laughs> I love that. Um, and how how have things been? How have things been over the last seven months? Do you feel like you're now in a nice groove? Yeah. Do you know? I think I I, I can see you see now that on the day after what you saw before. If you know what I mean. So you think oh today's hard this is a bit of a struggle he's crying in the car and I have to pull over four times and you go oh that was hard but then the next day you have to pull over 17 times and then you completely (laughs) cancel your day so there's like things like that that you learn that you think that was bad but actually no he's like he's just pulled out a winner here and like done a bit he's got a bit crazier and you think oh right yeah it can get a little bit harder but like every moment I think I learned to just Have more patience, just relax a bit more. You know, like the times is like there's the screaming and you think he's gonna be okay in a minute, like he can't scream forever. It's just gonna be something I'm not done yet. Yeah. And then when you do that one thing that you've not like you've done you go, Oh, there it is, that was what it was, and then it all comes together and you just like now he smiles and laughs his head off at his dad, by the way, which I'm fuming about. Like, 
I mean, I'm the funny one. Like, I, I literally said, like, I've been to comedy classes. Like, you will, you will know this. Like, you, you were, an, you were an actress. Like, you're the funny one. What? How is he laughing at him? Isn't the funny one bit? <laughs> you'll get your laughs. Then you worry, and then you'll have. Yeah. You know, he'll be your biggest fan. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, he goes out the. He goes out the room, and I try the thing that Ollie tried. I'm like, what did you do? I'm like, will you laugh at me? <laughs> Have you started weaning he's, now? He is, is totally in everything and anything. Like he is a little fatty. He so because well, there was a time like, in six months, I literally said as well. I was like, hopefully six months. I don't want to breastfeed anymore. I just want him to start eating. And my boobs literally just nothing in them. I thought, oh, that's a bit cruel. Like you're trying. There's nothing there. Yeah. And we'd we'd sort of put bottles because my mum was looking after him for a bit. So she just did it. And I was like, wow, you accomplished the bottle. Like I didn't even try um and so he was doing that and then he was getting diarrhea so we took him to the doctors and they were like he needs food he needs solids now this is the sign so I was yeah. like wow okay and we literally tried him on I think like a bit puree food or whatever and he just was like um, <laughs> and like if you're eating something he's like ah, ah, ah. like he just shoves everything in like just loves food I love this phase. I love it so much. Oh, he's, he's such a little like lad. Like it's weird. I, like, we go to like baby groups. I don't know if you know. Like I mean, you notice like the girls are all prim and proper, aren't they? And they sit up nicely. And he's like, like just <laughs> goes in all fists. And you think, wow, that is a difference. Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting yeah. observing. I think. Yeah, yeah. If you could write a letter on motherhood, who would it be to? And what would you say? So. I would write to my grandma and because probably I didn't really appreciate her as much as a mother when I was a kid, you know, I'm yeah. just running off. Um, I think I'd be like, dear grandma, how on earth did you cope with, also how she didn't have scans back then. How did she cope with, you know, the thought of being pregnant? She also had twins. My mum was a twin. She didn't know she had twins until they came out as twins. Gosh. How did she how did she go through, you know, the pregnancy stage? Like how did she cope with having two kids and being pregnant? Um, I, I kind of wish I could ask for for advice now, really, yeah. it would be great. And and obviously then, you know, like coping through life, like she had two little twins and two older kids and just what she did and, you know, how that went. Yeah. She's clearly had a big impact on you as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she was fun. She was brilliant. And she was she used to play the piano and I used to dance in Manaki. That's what I remember. <laughs> That's so lovely. <laughs> um, but now your mum is the grandma. Yes. I mean, it took a bit of training. I'm, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I, we had a few moments where she was, the baby would cry, Forrest would cry. She'd be like, okay, time over. I'm like, no. This is what you're meant to do. You're supposed to know this. And she's like, this is 30 odd years. Yeah, but it all changes so much, like so quickly. Yeah. And she literally didn't want to put too much, like, she didn't want to be, you know, like, I'll do this, I'll do that. She was like, you should be doing that because it's your baby. And she didn't want to step in too much. But, and then there was times where I was like, why are you bringing a Sudoku to today? Because you're not going to have a chance to. Like, what are you doing? Why are you knitting? You don't need There's no entertainment. Knitting. There's no, you will have no moments to do this challenge of what, what are you doing? So we did have times of that. And she's got a lot better. Like, now she's, like, she was like, my back hurts. I need a back brace. And I had to buy one of them. <laughs> <laughs> she's learning on the job, but she's doing all right. Yeah, she's got a lot better. I'm literally now, I'm, I'm proud of her. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Um, I finished the podcast with you answering or completing three sentences. The first one is being a mum means. <laughs> being a mum means that I've not had to set my alarm at all um, for morning time. I mean, I was, a, a, I'm still quite, a, I'm not a nice morning person. <laughs> So, like, I'd wake up, like, vicious. I wouldn't know who I am. Like, I don't know me. I'm like, oh, hi, it's not me. <laughs> and he would wake up so happy and smiley where I'd have to literally, uh, my eyes like this, smiling, going, hello. <laughs> like, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., all the a.m.s. The next sentence is, since having a child, I. Since having a child, I. 
I I actually am I'm actually glad to say I've not changed that much as a person which I was a bit worried about because I think yeah. you still want to be your personality don't you and you know yeah. you still want to connect to yourself and um you know remember as, as you I've definitely got more patience and I've become a bit more like it's not about me as much anymore but I'm I'm glad I can still you know go and see friends go and do stuff at first it's very hard to do that it is very like tricky and scary and the first day out with your baby and you is yeah so scary isn't it like nobody can tell you until you do it uh, but now I can be like right I've got myself back mm-hmm. and still be because I think you want to still show your babies your children your personality yeah. and so you so I feel like that and then finally I'm happy when I'm happy when (laughs) I'm actually happy when Ollie and Forrest are laughing their heads off together it's the cutest thing I mean dads do these crazy things where they just wrestle with babies and throw them in the air don't they and you're like we've not made a rubber what are you doing (laughs) but when Forrest is enjoying it so much and he's laughing his head off it is just like Oh, I love seeing that and I think because I didn't grow up with a dad in my life I'm just so happy that Forrest has got that and he's, that's happening and it's on film that is <laughs> I love that thank you so yeah. much Georgie oh, it's thank so you. good it's chatting to you thank you oh, I've really enjoyed it thank you so much thank, thank you very you. much now you can drive in the car and listen to your own episode yeah oh, my, no I cringe I can't listen to myself <laughs> I'm embarrassing I'm a cringy person you'll be like why did I say that why did oh. I explain it like this <laughs> yeah no and for me it's my breathing I'm like why don't I breathe properly like it's my invisible life that's it <laughs> <laughs>